And in today's episode, among other things, you'll see Google's quantum chip, which spied on the parallel universe, opens the doors to reveal exotic matter, living computers. Scientists plan to turn bacteria into digital processors. Brazilian scientists have created a drug with placenta protein that restores movement to those who have lost it. A humanoid robot from University of California, Berkeley, plays table tennis with almost human-like agility. China's artificial sun project has broken a new nuclear fusion record and now promises unlimited energy. Hello, impressed viewers. I'm Carlos Alves, and you're watching Incredible Reality. Without further ado, let's get to the video. In Brazil, a scientific discovery that took 25 years could forever change the history of medicine around the world. Researchers managed to turn a protein found in the placenta into a medication capable of restoring people's movements. Even for those who are quadriplegic, it's the birth of a new hope which seemed impossible until not long ago. Restoring mobility to those who had already been told they would need a wheelchair for life. Researcher Tatiana Sampaio, a professor and doctor at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, led the achievement, working with a team of neurosurgeons, physical therapists, and health specialists. The result of this long work is polylaminin, a substance created from laminin, a protein naturally produced by the nervous system. In the experimental phase, it has already shown quite impressive effectiveness. Banker Bruno Drummond de Freitas, injured in a serious car accident, received this medication just 24 hours later and he managed to fully recover all of his movements, an achievement that defied medical diagnoses and the expectations of the entire team. Understanding the spinal cord's role highlights its importance. It acts as a main expressway between the brain and body, carrying electrical signals for movement. When a serious injury occurs, this communication is broken, leaving the arms and legs without response. What scientists have discovered is that laminin can help neurons build a new pathway thus crossing the injured area and establishing connections capable of reactivating those electrical impulses. It's like opening a detour on a blocked road, letting traffic flow again. That's the advantage of polylaminin, unlike stem cells, which carry risks and unpredictability. The body already uses the natural protein to regenerate tissues. Brazilian scientists have developed a simpler, safer, and more accessible alternative by mimicking nature. In tests with severely injured dogs, four out of six regained movement. And in human patients, about 10 people have already shown partial or total recovery of mobility. The key to this treatment appears to be timing. The most significant results appear when the medication is applied within the first 24 hours after the trauma. But the researchers also observed benefits in older injuries. Another advantage is the simplicity. A single dose followed by physical therapy is enough to start the rehabilitation process. The medication is currently awaiting Anvisa's approval for new clinical trials. These will be done with Hospital das Clínicas of Universidade de São Paulo and ACD, who handle patient surgery and rehabilitation. If approved, the medication could establish a new regulatory milestone here in Brazil, making polyaminin a real alternative for hospitals here in our country. If you regularly follow me here on Realidade, it's impressive to remember Willow, Google's 58-qubit quantum processor, well, now scientists have managed to use it. And this experiment revealed an exotic phase of matter that had never been observed before, once again raising the provocative hypothesis that we live in a multiverse. The achievement was possible due to collaboration between the Technical University of Munich, Princeton University, and Google Quantum Artificial Intelligence. Together, they managed to carry out plans for the first time, a topologically ordered Floquet state. That complicated name essentially means that they created a non-equilibrium quantum state in a system governed by rules that change over time, but in a rhythmic and predictable way. This phase had been proposed in theory, but never experimentally confirmed until now. Let me explain it to you in a somewhat simpler way. The phases of matter are like the states we know well, liquid water or solid ice. They appear under equilibrium when the system stays stable, but nature can still surprise us. Some phases appear only when the system is out of equilibrium. Here, Willow was driven by a rhythmic pattern, enabling a new type of dynamic order to emerge. With that, the team observed the transmutation of exotic particles, which had previously existed only in theory. The use of a quantum chip for this kind of study shows that these machines aren't just for calculations that are impossible for the classical computers we have today. 
They are experimental platforms that are capable of recreating and also investigating the behaviors of matter that challenge conventional thermodynamics itself. To probe the new phase, the researchers also developed an interferometric algorithm that worked like a lens, capable of revealing the hidden topological structure. When did this same processor already attract attention? It completed a task in under five minutes that would take a regular supercomputer 10 septillion years. That's when the first speculations about real parallel universes were born in the minds of the developers of this technology. Now, besides reinforcing this discussion, the discovery shows that quantum computers can be used as complete laboratories, thus exploring states of matter that are impossible to reach under normal conditions. This paves the way to understand phenomena that are still unexplained and, in the future, to develop technologies that today seem very much like science fiction. For those who have seen the Foundation series on Apple Television or read Jose's book, you might remember the Radiant. It would be something similar to that, but in the future, of course, witnessing a chip revealing exotic particles in full mutation. The scientists are not only advancing in quantum physics, but also touching on issues that go beyond traditional science. How far can quantum computers really take us? Will they just be calculation tools? Or will they become something much greater? Keys to explore parallel universes that some imagine and theorize exist. Tell me here in the comments. Do you think all of this is crazy? Or do you really think parallel universes could exist? And what if the computers of the future were made of silicon but from living cells? That's the bold idea behind a project at Rice University down in Texas, which received almost $2 million from the National Science Foundation. To develop some bacterial systems that are capable of functioning as biological processors, the concept is as provocative as it is straightforward. Each bacterial cell would act as a kind of microprocessor, and together, they could form a living and highly adaptable computing network. This field already exists and is called biocomputing, which seeks to replace or complement electronic circuits with living matter. Have those following me here already seen reports on brain organoid initiatives? They are small structures grown in the lab that mimic human neurons. They are used to process information with energy efficiency, which is quite impressive. But the approach here is a little different. Rice. They're using microbes instead of brain tissues, aiming to make them building blocks for digital systems. Professor Matthew Bernier, the study leader, says microorganisms are natural information processors, exchanging chemical and electrical signals. The goal now is to use the communication capacity rule in electronic circuits. Creating a hybrid platform where bacteria interact directly with sensors and digital components. This way, it would be possible to build networks that not only process data, but also learn, adapt, and respond to the environment. The potential goes far beyond scientific curiosity. Living computers could recognize complex chemical patterns, becoming powerful tools in medical diagnostics and environmental monitoring. And what about biological systems? They could evolve and adapt in ways that traditional computers simply can't. But along with the excitement, delicate questions also arise, like how to regulate the creation of this living computer made from living matter. What ethical boundaries would need to be set so that these technologies are used responsibly? The Rice University project plans to explore both the practical applications and the social and legal impacts of this innovation. This could permanently alter the relationship between biology and technology. University of California Berkeley researchers demonstrated the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, a humanoid robot trained to play table tennis, which has already trained more than 100 times in a row against human opponents. It does this with movements and reflexes, much like a beginner in the sport. In the video released by the institution, International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor shows a certain naturalness in its movements. With each play, the right arm swings the racket as the left hand extends for balance, thus mimicking real players' gestures. In live tests, the robot managed to perform a sequence of 106 consecutive smashes against humans, a performance that would surpass most amateurs. The explanation for this feat lies in the dual system design added to the robot. At the top, a high-level planner works like the brain of the machine. Using external cameras to track the ball in real time, it predicts where the ball will land. It calculates the exact position, speed, and ideal timing for a perfect return. But thinking alone isn't enough. A complementary low-level system functions like the body, translating commands into coordinated arm and leg movements. This combination is what allows the robot to move sideways, spin, and swing the racket smoothly. This allows it to respond in under a second to balls moving at up to 5 meters per second. Teaching a robot to play table tennis is a huge challenge. The sport requires split-second decisions, 
adaptation to unpredictable plays, and precise coordination. To overcome these barriers, the equipment combined two worlds. Model-based planning, responsible for predicting trajectories and choosing actions, and reinforcement learning. What adjusts movements by trial and error and integrates human movement data? International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor started to move in a much more intuitive way, even imitating the positioning of the feet and the rotation of the body. Details that make it incredibly realistic. You can see that the robustness of the system was tested on a unitary platform. The G1 playing not only against humans, but also against other robots. And this test represents a significant step in building machines that will be able to interact with our world in increasingly human ways. By integrating hierarchical planning, reinforcement learning, and real data observation, the project enables more agile, intuitive, and capable robots. And maybe the, the big question here isn't whether they will beat amateur players, but how far will these machines be able to compete with our own species in activities that we always thought were exclusively ours belonging to human beings? Raphael Advanced Defense and Systems of Israel unveiled the Iron Man 450 in London at the International Defense Exhibition. This is not just a technological breakthrough, it represents a paradigm shift in how armies can protect both troops in the field and entire cities. The system's strength is in its name, Ioran Man. 450 uses a 450 mLR aperture and delivers 100 kilo de alert of power in a high energy laser beam. Unlike traditional weapons that rely on expensive and limited ammunition, this laser has what the company calls, quote, an unlimited magazine. In other words, as long as there is available power, it can intercept successive threats, quickly switching targets and firing at the speed of light. It was built to neutralize rockets, artillery, cruise missiles, and drones, even in coordinated swarm attacks. The key is advanced coherent beam combining technology, providing precise, stable tracking even for fast targets. Its operation can be divided into two layers, multifunctional beam directors, responsible for stabilizing and focusing the shot, and a secure remote control system, which allows operators to react in real time to each threat. The beam quickly focuses energy on a key point of the enemy object, heating and destroying it without shrapnel or uncontrolled explosions. And the big difference is that besides speed and precision, the Iron Bin 450 is economically sustainable. Today, using missiles that cost tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars to destroy drones worth only a few hundred is simply unfeasible. The new laser promises to solve this equation, making each interception almost cost-free. The project is among a group of directed energy weapons Raphael has developed in recent years. These include the Little Bin, a 10-kilowatt vehicle-mounted laser, and the Iron Bin M, with 50 kilowatts and a 250-millimeter aperture. Now, with the 450, the company increases both the range and the power, a scale that promises not only to strengthen the armies, but also to create a reliable shield for urban centers and critical infrastructure. The message conveyed by the company is very clear. Directed energy, that is, laser weapons, are ready to transform the battlefield, offering fast, clean, and economically viable interceptions. We've long seen concrete just as a structural material, like a static base for bridges and buildings. But scientists at Aarhus University in Denmark challenged that view. So they created a living cement with incorporated bacteria, capable not only of supporting walls, but also of storing electricity, functioning as a supercapacitor. Inside the construction, the idea seemed like something out of a science fiction movie, until they managed to make it happen. They added to the cement a well-known bacteria for moving electricity outside its cells, once mixed into the material. This microscopic colony forms a network of charge carriers enabling the concrete to store and release energy. Initial tests have already shown that they do outperform conventional storage devices that are made with cement. And there's an interesting detail. Even after the microbes die, the cement keeps working. If they receive nutrients, proteins, vitamins, and minerals, they can, in quotes, come back to life and regain up to 80% of their capacity. This completely changes how we view infrastructures. Imagine walls, foundations, even bridges. Functioning as large integrated batteries, they would store solar energy and support local electrical systems. To show their idea works in practice, the researchers created a small but significant sample. By concentrating six blocks of the material, they lit an LED lamp. Researchers say this is the first time structure and function have been combined in one material. And they explained that an entire room built with living cement could store up to 10 kilo of energy enough 
to keep a corporate server running for up to a day. This, in theory, means that in the future, entire buildings could serve as large distributed batteries, thus reducing the dependence on lithium and cobalt, which are expensive and limited. Of course, this technology is in its early stages. But it already points to a future where buildings are no longer just passive. Pardon the redundancy, they start to feed themselves, actively participating in the energy ecosystem. And speaking of energy, the search for clean and also unlimited energy may have taken a historic leap. In China, scientists have achieved an impressive feat with their so-called artificial sun, a nuclear fusion reactor, which promises to permanently alter global sustainable energy research. Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak Achievement is more than a scientific record. Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak is seen as a milestone that brings humanity closer to the long-dreamed practical nuclear fusion. Also known as HT-7U, the Chinese artificial sun has operated since 2006 under the Institute of Plasma Physics, Chinese Academy of Sciences. It's the first fully superconducting, non-circular tokamak ever built. The team recently maintained steady-state H-mode operation, keeping plasma above 100 million degrees Celsius. That lasted an amazing 1,066 seconds. Then, in January of this year, they went even further and maintained this condition for 17 minutes and 46 seconds, setting their new world record. To grasp this breakthrough scale, remember what a tokamak is. It's a ring-shaped device that uses intense magnetic fields to contain the plasma. It's a state of matter in which atoms are so heated that the electrons separate from the nuclei. Nuclear fusion occurs in this extreme environment the same process that powers our sun. The challenge is to maintain this plasma stability at temperatures that can reach up to six times hotter than the core of our real sun. It developed the Institute of Energy, universities, companies, and EFE's Institutes of Physical Sciences. The goal was to overcome stable operation and long pulse limitations in superconducting tokamaks. The results confirmed this is possible and showed these conditions are increasingly achievable in controlled environments. The distinguishing feature of experimental advanced superconducting tokamak is its ability to maintain plasma in self-confinement, a condition known as H-mode, which is fundamental to making fusion viable in practice. Over years of testing, the reactor has provided very valuable experimental data helping to overcome technical and structural obstacles. Proof that plasma can be confined at extreme temperatures for long periods transforms research from basic science to practical engineering. This advance opens the door to nuclear fusion power plants, which could theoretically offer nearly limitless energy. Without the radioactive waste issues of current power plants, the Chinese artificial sun is just an experiment. It's a real glimpse of our planet's energy future. Are we witnessing the beginning of a new era where the energy that powers our sun could also power our cities, completely transforming the relationship we as human beings have with our planet's resources? The next experiments will tell us all about that. Speaking of next, I'll see you in the next video. If you liked our content, check the sources listed in the description. To study more, click a suggestion on your screen. See you next time, and thanks for staying with me, and see you in the next one. So, let me know in the comments. I'm going to watch the next Reality Dottie video. Impressive comment below. That way I'll know you made it to the end.